Great, thanks, Mike. Um, <laughs> thanks, <Tim. laughs> um, I just want to check. My sound has been a bit fuzzy. Is is it okay? Can people hear me? Okay, good. I don't know. Sounds good. Hear you. Yeah. Good. Good. Um, I was just thinking just then as well. Uh, isn't it wonderful that that we are in a family? And I was thinking actually, the spiritual family, the family of Christ, uh, <laughs> is a stronger bond uh, than flesh and blood. Uh, we don't we don't really often think like that, but it is. Um, God has made us one in his spirit and, and that is more than, than flesh and blood. Um, and that's an amazing thing that God has joined us in a family, um, in his family. Um, good. Well, it's, it is great to be together. Um, but today uh, I want to speak about a bit about one of God's names. Uh, one of his names is Jehovah Jireh. Uh, and that means the Lord who provides. Uh, there's also a sense of the Lord who sees and the Lord who will see to it. Um, it's a name we're probably all familiar with. Um, Jehovah Jireh. Yes, the Lord who provides. We, we know this. We know this, don't we? Um, but do we really know it? We must know God and we must know his character. We must have intimate heart communion with him so that we know him so that we are sure of him of who he is and what he is like so that when doubts come we can dismiss them and say no i know my father and i trust him i want us to consider today god's great provision and the many ways which he provides uh, we'll look first at the physical or the practical aspect of God's provision uh, then at what God provides for us spiritually and lastly we'll turn our eyes to God's greatest provision for us his salvation um, so God provides in the physical realm he provides for all he has made God tells Job that he satisfies the appetite of the of the young lions and that he provides for the raven its prey when its young ones cry to him for help. Um, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says that his father feeds the birds of the air. And if we think about it, he provides for the spiders, the ants, even the rats. All living things are provided for by God. Uh, now, if he cares and provides for the sparrows, for the elephants, for the elephant shrews, how much more will he care for us and provide for us all that he knows that we need? It seems that it's very easy for us to forget these things and to forget how God has looked after us in the past. Um, just think about the disciples after the feeding of the 5,000. Jesus is trying to teach them um, about the leaven or the yeast of the Pharisees. And he means their bad teaching. But this, the disciples start thinking, he's talking about this because they've forgotten to bring bread along on their journey. Jesus had not long before fed 5,000 men plus their wives and children with five loaves and two fish. This is happening in front of their eyes. They were even involved in dishing out the food. Somehow, though, they still didn't have faith that Jesus could or would provide whatever they needed. Um, in between those two events, Jesus had also fed 4,000 people. And at that time, there was less people and there was more food um, from which to feed them. There were seven loaves and a few fish. But even then, the disciples worried what could be done to provide for these people. And I think we can all be like this. We seem to be hardwired to worry. Um, worry gets us all in different ways and to differing degrees. But I think that we could all do with more freedom from worry and more faith. Do not be anxious about anything. 
but in everything by prayer and supplication let your requests be made known to god and the peace of god which passes understanding will guard your hearts and minds in christ jesus there's a story which i really like which illustrates this well i think i've i'm pretty sure i've probably shared it before uh, but i'll tell it again it's about a man who was visiting his friend in canada uh, in the deep the depths of winter and uh, they were driving around somewhere and they were driving past uh, one of the big lakes and it was completely frozen over and um, like all big boys they looked at this frozen lake and they had one thought oh let's pull over and get out and walk on the lake see how far we can go won't that be exciting so they did they pulled over and they kind of tentatively stepped out onto the ice and walked a few meters and heard a few kind of rumblings in the ice and uh, quickly ran back oh that was great feeling very very brave they got back in the car and as they were driving off they looked out and in the middle of the lake they could see someone and he was there he'd cut a hole in the ice and he was fishing through the hole had a little fire going with a pot of tea on it and just completely relaxed uh, not worrying at all about ice falling or anything like that and it's just a little picture really of uh, what we can be like with God uh, and for, for both um, or the, the three chaps in this um, picture in this story they were all on the same ice um, the ice wasn't going to let any of them down and it's the same for us God holds us in his hands he's never going to let anyone down um, but our experience of him can be different uh, the two that quickly ran out they you know they kind of okay they got on the ice that was the start but there was a bit of worry there. Um, the guy in the middle was happy as Larry. Um, you know, he probably could have camped out and slept there. Um, and that's how God wants us to be with him, that we can trust him uh, and know that he will look after us. Uh, he will provide for us. It's, it's really a picture of having faith in, in God. You know, and, and it's not that our faith changes the ice. It doesn't change who God is just changes our experience of it um, and it's not really about having possession having stuff god can provide us all we need sometimes he gives some people a lot but whatever we've been given we should be two things and that's content and generous uh, paul tells timothy that with food and clothing we shall be content and he tells the Philippians that he's learned to be content in any and every circumstance. Are you content? Do you feel like you should have more? More things, more money, more opportunities, a bigger house, a better car, a better job, a better boss, a better lot in life. We must be careful of being discontent because it's like pointing our finger at God and blaming him for our circumstances. The story of the Israelites in the wilderness is a great reminder of God's amazing provision and of how easily we can forget God's faithfulness, um, especially in moments of hardship and difficulty. We already heard a little bit about that um, uh, in, in the prayer, I think, about this the children of Israel but all that God had provided for them was incredible to start with there was the miracle laden exodus out of Egypt um, and then in the wilderness he sustained them so constantly and faithfully even amid their many grumblings and complaining God led them and guided them away from enemies and away from danger he led them to springs of water and then when they were in the middle of the desert he gave them water from a rock um, he gave them manna the bread from heaven every day we're even told in deuteronomy that their clothes and their shoes never wore out in 40 years in the wilderness that is pretty amazing but in spite of all this they still found lots to complain about and they grumbled against moses and they grumbled against god even Moses got so frustrated, he got to the point where he thought, how on earth, God, are you going to give them meat for a month? 
Um, there's the time when they complained about this manor and God was like, and they wanted meat. They wanted someone to give them meat. Um, so God said, I'll, well, I'll give you meat till it's coming out your ears until you're sick of it. And Moses says, well, how on earth are you going to do that? There's something like 60,000 people here. Um, and God says to him, is the arm of the Lord shortened? Is the hand of the Lord shortened? Do we know God enough to trust him for all our needs, small and great? Can we be content with what he gives us and not crave other things? Does God have to ask us, is my hand shortened? I hope not. Now, I think it can be easy to read stories in the Bible and read things about God's amazing works. And just to think, well, they were sort of special times then. And um, God, God does things a bit differently now. Um, I think we can all be guilty of that kind of thinking sometimes. But God is steadfast. He is unchanging. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. What we see God doing in the Bible, he's able to do today. He has not changed. Do we believe that? God has so many ways of meeting our needs. He is creative and almighty, and he loves to bless us. He revels in being our father and our God who sees and provides. Whether it's water from a rock in the middle of the desert, or whether it's opening the eyes of Hagar so that she can see the well that's just beside her, whether it is using a whale as a taxi for Jonah, or a small fish, fish to bring the temple tax to Peter, whether it's feeding 5,000 people with one boy's packed lunch, or whether it's sending ravens to bring food to Elijah, whether it's putting Joseph in place in Egypt as the second in command to avert the consequences of a worldwide famine, or whether it's a widow's jar of flour and jug of oil that just don't run out, God provides for his people. Now that's just the physical side of things. What about spiritually? And as is so often true, as with the physical, so with the spiritual. God sees and knows all of our lacks spiritually and he's able to meet our needs abundantly. God does not do things in half measures. He provides his children with more than enough. He is an abundant God, and he wants to impart himself to us, to enable us to live his life through us. If we feel lacking spiritually, we find so much encouragement in the scriptures. Jesus said to his disciples, what father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Another um, version in, in another Gospel of says, how much more will your Heavenly Father not give good gifts to those who ask him? We can be assured that our Heavenly Father wants good things for us spiritually and is ready to give us all that we need. 1 John 5 verse 14 tells us, This is the confidence we have towards him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know that we have the requests we have asked of him. We can have great confidence in God. If we ask, Lord, I like you, or give me more grace, or patience, or love, God will answer those prayers. We're told in James that if anyone lacks wisdom, he should ask God for it, and he will give generously. When we are tempted, we are told in 1 Corinthians that God provides the way of escape, and he does, but we must avail ourselves of it. The manna we spoke of earlier that God provided every day for the children of Israel as a spiritual picture for us. That we are to come daily to eat our bread for today. And that bread is Jesus. We can only eat today's bread, not yesterday's. God wants us to rely on his provision every day. His mercies are new every morning. 
we must feed on Jesus each and every day and go forwards in his strength. There are many verses that highlight this provision in different ways to us. Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Ephesians 4, 21 to 24, you were taught in Christ to put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. 1 Corinthians 2.12 says, Now we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might understand the things freely given to us by God. And verse 16 says, Who has understood the mind of the Lord to instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Truly, God's spiritual provision for us is absolutely incredible. Christ lives in me. I live by his faith. I can put on a new self in the likeness of God and I can have the mind of Christ. Wow. And that's just scratching the surface. Peter writes in his second letter that God's divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He says that this is through knowing him and also that we can be partakers of the divine nature. What a provision. I often think in light of all this that God has provided for me, what is my excuse? Why am I not where I could be? Why am I not living the truth of these verses more fully? If you sometimes think the same, let us encourage ourselves with Paul's words in Philippians. Um, I'm going to turn there because it's a slightly longer passage. Philippians chapter 3, uh, from verse 12 to 16. I'm just going to read, read that. And I think this was also prayed earlier on. Not that I have already obtained this or am already perfect, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of, the, of you who are mature think this way, and in if anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that also to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Don't live in the past, regretting missed opportunities. I should have spent more time with God. Yes, we should have. But live today. Be given to God today. Make the most of today's opportunities. Because today is a great day. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Today is the day of salvation. And speaking of salvation, that is the greatest thing that God has provided for us because it was our greatest need. Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. It is in the context of God providing a substitute sacrifice that the name Jehovah Jireh is given. In a foreshadow of the cross, God had asked Abraham to sacrifice his only son, his beloved Isaac. We know the story. God, seeing his heart reflected in Abraham and seeing Abraham's obedience and faith in him, provides a ram in place of Isaac. Earlier, Abraham had said when Isaac was asking about where the sacrifice was, God, he says, God will provide for himself a lamb for the burnt offering. Praise God that he has provided a lamb as the sacrifice for himself to take our place his only begotten and beloved son, Jesus. What a provision. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. My sin left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. There is nothing that we need to add to all that he's done. 
All we need to do is to accept it. Uh, I just want to read another passage. Uh, it's Ephesians chapter 2, the first few verses. Um, so Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 1. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Jesus Christ, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us, in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And this is all by grace. All that we have was given by God. We earned nothing. We deserved nothing, but God was rich in mercy towards us. And verse 11 and 12, it says, Therefore remember that at one time you Gentiles in the flesh called the uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision, which is made in the flesh by hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. It does us good to remember how hopeless we were without Christ, so that we can have compassion on unbelievers. This great provision of salvation is for everyone. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, so that whosoever believes in him might not perish, but have everlasting life. People are perishing. People are separated from Christ. Strangers to the covenants of promise. They have no hope and they are without God in the world. Does that move us? Do we long for people to be saved? Does our heart ache for it? Do we have the mind of Christ towards unbelievers? It's easy sometimes to think, well, people are just so evil and stubborn, they deserve what's coming to them. It's easy to think, oh, if people just don't really want to hear. Or oh, if they knew everything that I believed, they'd be really offended or they'd ridicule me. Well, let's not be ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. It was for you. Why not for others? Remember, God is creative and varied in his provision. He can reach and save the lost in all kinds of ways that we wouldn't even think of. What great provision and, um, our Father has given us. He's made amazing provision for us in all realms. If we can accept God's provision of salvation, can we accept all that he wants to provide for us in him, for our life? God in this? Do we still doubt God in this? Or maybe we doubt ourselves. Do we still have worry about lacking anything in physical or spiritual realms? Remember, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not graciously give us all things? Coming back to the children of Israel, they give us a warning. They saw God's great salvation. They partook of the Passover, another wonderful foreshadowing of Jesus' sacrifice. They enjoyed the daily manna that God so faithfully gave them, and the water that he miraculously provided for them in more than one way. 
Yet many of them still despised him and they despised his provision and they grumbled and they complained against him. They were supposed to be God's witnesses. Uh, no, Ron Bailey's often said that uh, they, was, they were intended to be the original Jehovah's Witnesses. Um, witnesses to Jehovah Jireh. But instead, they often ended up being a poor representation of him. And many of them paid the price for it. First Corinthians tells us that they are to be an example to us. And a warning or an instruction of how not to be. Let us be good examples of those who know our Father God as Jehovah Jireh. Let our lives be evidence that God provides for us all that we need. We should be full of joy and peace. God has provided our greatest need. Salvation through Jesus Christ. That should give us great confidence. Praise God that he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And that he's blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Let us press forward into all that God has for us. He wants us to have his life abundantly. The physical things, food and clothing, let us not worry about them. God will always look after us. Even if we were to suffer the loss of these things, he will be with us and he will sustain us. Finally, let us long for others to know God as their father as their provider. Let us not shrink back from proclaiming him with our words and with the way that we live our lives. Amen. Okay, Michael, I'll hand back over to you. Thanks, Andy. Thanks for that encouragement just to get our heads straight about these things. Um, Andy asked if we could 